On this video, we'll, we'll focus briefly on the differences between uh, or the male and female um, gamete production, and this actually gets a name. It's called gametogenesis, or, or the process of creating gametes. Now, the major differences between a male and a female are the actual speed, location, name, and the um, there's also some start, start different nuances on the actual process. So let's talk about the speed first of all. Um, remember that both of them will start with a germ cell undergoing mitosis, and then that germ cell will create two germ cells. One of them is the reserve, which can then undergo this whole process back from scratch, and the other one will actually undergo meiosis to make the eggs. But that's the same for both of them. The difference is that the male spermatogenesis is much faster and it happens at a very high rate and, and thousands of germs just basically because thousands of germ cells actually hundreds of thousands of germ cells are undergoing this process all at once and so you create thousands of germ cells because of this in fact uh, males can produce m millions of germ cells um, every day and s while females only produce one egg a month so and another the big difference is that males will produce this throughout their entire life. Pretty much by the time you hit puberty, you're going to start producing gametes all the way to the end of your life when uh, it will slow down much, but you can still theoretically produce gametes all the way to, your, to, to the end of your life. Now, the females will produce this once a month until they hit from puberty until they hit the end of their um, reproductive cycle. Um, which is called the menopause, and then they will actually stop producing these eggs on a monthly basis. Now, the other interesting thing is that you see that there's always two steps to gamete production. There's meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. And the other interesting thing that's different about females is that you, you, all of the meiosis 1, in other words, here, all, this first step right there, all right, all of the meiosis 1 happens when the female is still a, um, a fetus in the belly of the mom. That means the ovaries of the females already store all of this first generation meiosis 1 haploid cell here that the girls are ever going to have for the rest of their life. Girls will never do meiosis 1 throughout their life. They will only do meiosis 2. So what happens monthly in the ovaries is that transformation from that first generation to the actual. So the cell actually stayed arrested as this uh, um, halfway point. And then once a month, one of them is induced to undergo meiosis 2 and complete the process of oogenesis. So that's another big difference. Also, location. The, obviously, the spermatogenesis, which is the making of sperm, um, happens in the uh, testes of males or uh, the testicles of males, while the uh, oogenesis, which is the making of eggs, will actually happen in the... Um, um, ovaries and by the way the way I remember what well, Genesis is basically because it makes two eggs so uh, t uh, at the end and it's like ooh ooh so like there you see that both eggs being made and that's actually a mnemonic for something else that happens during the process notice that doing sperm sperm um, ooh, spermatogenesis four uh, actual sperm cells are produced and the actual uh, gametes undergo a differentiation process to actually become ready as the sperm that can actually be launched into uh, to try to meet the egg. But the female egg, something different happens altogether. Doing meiosis 1, when uh, cytokinesis takes place, one of the cells takes all the cytoplasm and the other one is robbed of the cytoplasm. Now, why does that happen? Well, it happens because you want to maximize the amount of nutrients which are going to be in this uh, um, egg because this egg is going to have to uh, sustain the initial cell division after fertilization takes place before the, the fetus starts to get nutrients from the mother, which means the egg has to be huge and full of uh, actual nutrients and organelles and everything it's going to need. And so the majority of the cytoplasm goes into one of them, which is why you are then going to undergo this uh, uh, growth process. So the the, the other one, it's called a polar body, and it may or may not undergo meiosis as well, And it, but eventually you, may, you end up making these three little cells, because when this happens again to meiosis 2, the same thing will happen. Uh, this one will get all the cytoplasm, this one will get none of it, it will just basically be a nucleus, and these will just basically be rejected by the body and destroyed and consumed and used for something else, while this one will actually undergo to become differentiated into the egg, and some alterations will be made to the egg, they will be, they will be adding... Uh, uh, sacs full of nutrients on the outside. They'll be all adding amniotic fluid around it and just getting 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 it ready to actually uh, uh, be the 
basically the storehouse or the or the, or the uh, oven that's going to cook the initial subdivision and we talk about that in another video when we do the human embryonic development now you see this major difference between oogenesis and gametogenesis in terms of where it happens how fast it happens the name of the process and also slight difference in the processes mostly the formation of polar bodies in females and also the formation of the uh, differentiation to actual sperm cells or spermatozoids into males, which is something peculiar that only happens in, with those gametes. Uh, all right, so let's actually break it down and talk about what happens in each one of these processes. Now, here you see spermatogenesis, and as, as usual, you see a, a germ cell, which is a doubled, uh, it, went, under, underwent, uh, it already underwent its... its um, the vision of the S phase, and so it's now ready to undergo mitosis, and then it's got doubled the, the chromosomes. And now the first thing, the, the, the first thing that will happen, you see that there, it, it will under that that germ cell will undergo mitosis, and then undergo the S phase, like I just mentioned. And now you have this doubled. Remember, we talked about this. Is it's two times two N cell over here, and you see the autosomes and the sex chromosomes. This guy, this is probably going to, has a Y chromosome, so it's going to be a, a, a male that we're talking about here, and it has to be a male, of course, otherwise it wouldn't, it wouldn't be doing sperm, spermatogenesis. So, anyways, the the first thing will happen during meiosis one. There's going to be some crossing over taking place, and notice that in this screen, I don't, the only thing I don't like about it is that it actually doesn't show you the crossing over. But remember that pieces of each of the autosomes and the sex chromosome, any paired chromosome should automatically have switched some of the pieces back and forth. Also, also will happen here to uh, the separation of the homologs. And that you see here that each each will go one way, and then you have meiosis one completed. And at this point, you actually make. Uh, a two n cell, oh sorry, a two times and um, two times n cell, and that we call a secondary spermatocyte, and it's already haploid. It just has um, two copies of each chromosome because you see the sister chromatids are each are still connected, and that's why you need meiosis two, which then separates the sister chromatids to actually make a spermat spermatid, which is the n cell or the final gamete that I wanted. But remember that this will have to then undergo a differentiation process to actually become the spermatozoid or the sperm, which is the final thing that gets sent into the woman. So the primary spermatocyte is that 2 times 2 N cell, which is diploid, and then the secondary spermatocyte is produced at the end of meiosis 1, and it's already haploid, it's a 2 times N cell. And then you have this primitid, which is the, already the end cell after meiosis 2 and the separation of chromatids. But remember that this screen is not showing you the, the different, uh, the crossing over, which is what happens during the, the prophase of meiosis 1. All right, now that's spermatogenesis. Now, oogenesis will be similar. And again, it will, it will start with the oogonian, which is the, the diploid um, germ cell, which can do undergo that. And they will undergo mitosis and will make two daughter cells, one of them will actually, un uh, it's just so that the process can restart, and then the, the other one will actually become the primary oocyte, which is the diploid 2 times 2 N cell. Now, notice that the in this case, we have two X's, as it should be for the sex chromosomes, because that's a female we're talking about, because females are the ones that do oogenesis. Now, after meiosis 1 takes place, uh, you're going to have crossing over, and they didn't show the crossing over again, but, I mean, it is possible that no crossing over took place. I mean, um, that it didn't make many changes, but it should, you should see uh, on the, on the A-type chromosome, you should so, see some blue here and some green there, so it, sh it should look a little more like this. You should have some... Let me just fix that because I really wanted you to realize that the, the crossing over is taking place on these things. So it should look a little more like that. But after the after after the meiosis one is completed, you you have an interchange in actual genetic data between the two of them, and which will cause the gametes all to be different from each other. And that's kind of what happens at crossing over. But anyways, uh, in addition to the crossing over, you have the secondary oocyte. Now this is again. This was this was my two times two n cell, and now this is my two times n cell. And again, it's called a secondary oocyte, just like it was called a secondary uh, spermatocyte on the other one. It's two times n cell. Now this is already haploid because of the separation of the homologs that happened during the anaphase one. Now the after first, um, this will actually undergo uh, a process of. Um, 
notice that one of them will actually become a polar body and will become too small to actually become an egg. So these were act are actually all doomed to die because the, they become too small. Instead, this one actually got all the cytoplasm. And then when the girl actually hits puberty, it will start once a month getting one of these secondary oocytes and splitting it again through meiosis 2. And then the cystochromatids will separate to create the actual uh, ovum. Now the secondary polar body will also die. And then the ovum, one out of the four, will actually be differentiated. And like I said, you will add the... the, 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 the the nutrients around it and the protection layer and we talked about this in another video about the actual shape of the egg and all, all of that and so and then you actually make the mature egg and, the, and that's the end of the wood genesis and these of course all the polar bodies and an egg are end cells or haploid all right and that's the process of wood genesis now i wanted to show you briefly the difference between the structure of the egg and the ovum you see that the the sperm uh, has a long tail, familiar, not, not really a uh, flagellum, but very similar to a flagellum. And it's, it's got loaded with mitochondria in there to power that tail's motion. And then it's got the actual cell or the soma in the top where it stores the DNA there on all the chromosomes, all 23 of them. And then it has an acrosome, which is an area full of digestive enzymes and lysosomes, which are going to be used to pierce the outer membrane of the egg. And you see that happening here. And now the, you also see the difference in size between the egg and the sperm because remember the egg underwent that different meiosis where each one of the eggs receives all the cytoplasm and so the egg just grows and grows after each division. So the, the, and the, meanwhile the sperm is reduced because it doesn't need anything except the actual thing. Now remember that only the DNA of the egg, of the, of the sperm actually goes inside the egg. All the organelles that you inherit, you inherit from your mother, which is why mitochondrial DNA is, uh, is, comes only from the mothers. Now, anyways, here's how it looks on the egg. You're going to have this jelly coat on the outside to protect the egg. You're going to have the nucleus of the actual egg. And then you have these, a bunch of these yolk droplets inside the egg, which are basically the nutrients that's going to be necessary for the egg to uh, under for the zygote once the fertilization actually happens to undergo the initial division process and you also notice that it has a little polar body there too which is uh, basically uh, a dead uh, it's going to be used for it's going to grow into uh, pieces of the embryo which are going to be in charge with, with feeding the uh, the egg and so there's a basic difference in structure of the egg and the sperm and of course what you see here is fertilization and we'll take it out from here as we talk about the um, uh, the uh, fertilization process and the actual sexual reproduction of humans on the next set of videos.